Well, today we're talking about the question I get asked more than anything. How do I grade my EOSR log footage? And at the end of the video, we're gonna be talking about a giveaway for a Rode Video Micro. So stick around for that. Let's get into the video. Well, hey, what's up? My name is Tony and I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Today we're talking about how to grade log footage from the EOS R. This is the question I get asked more than anything and I am so excited to show you my process of how I color grade my footage from this camera. And uh, to be honest, there's all sorts of ways that you can do it. So I'm just gonna share my way. Before we get into it, let's talk about a few updates. You may notice that I'm not wearing a sling anymore, which is awesome. Uh, I got released from that. I, man, it was just so tight and constricted when I was wearing that sling that uh, my muscles were cramping. And so as soon as I got out of that, uh, my arm is starting to heal. I don't have full motion yet, but it's coming and uh, I can still take photos, so that's most important. Thank you so much for all the comments and the direct messages on Instagram. Uh, so many kind words, thank you guys for that. Also, we hit a thousand subscribers. How awesome is that? And I'm excited to just be able to give back a little bit. I love to equip others, and this is just another way that I can do that. So, stick around for the end of the video. Make sure that you're subscribed, and we'll get into that later. But, let's start talking about EOS R log footage. Now, I made a video a couple weeks ago on why I shoot in log and when I shouldn't. I also made a video talking about how to properly expose log footage. And the third part of that kind of series is how do we actually color grade the footage once we have it properly exposed and into our computers. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna walk through the process with you of what I do, but before we get into the computer, let's talk about log footage and color grading. Now, there's a few things we under need to understand. The first one is there is no correct way that you have to do it. There's so many different ways that you can color grade footage, and this is personally just the way that I have learned how to do it. You may find that there's a different way that works for you, and that's okay. Honestly, that's just part of the creative process. So, there's some guidelines and some rules that I'm gonna share with you on how to follow, and some tools that you should be using to color grade your footage. But other than that, this is just my way that I do it. There's no right or wrong way. Second is we need to understand the difference between color correction and color grading. Color correction is basically just making your footage look as natural as possible as if you were actually right then and there in that scene. But color grading actually takes colors and manipulates the footage so that it, it portrays certain feelings and emotions. You'll see this done in films all over the place. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about kind of how I will color grade my footage and how does uh, color correction work with all that. So those are the two basic things that we really needed to talk about before we start talking through how I color grade. Uh, so why don't we get into the computer and uh, we can go from there. All right, well, welcome to my computer. We're gonna talk through color grading EOSR log footage. Uh, I am in Premiere Pro, and uh, there's no way I can talk through everything because it'd be like a like a three hour long video, but I want to give you just a good glimpse of the way that I color footage. It's not necessarily the right way, but um, it's a way. So, uh, I've already created a, f a project, I've created a uh, sequence, and I've dropped some footage in here. We did uh, shoot an abandoned house. Uh, past couple days here and so I've just got some really cool footage here and you'll notice it's all shot in log it's all flat uh, this one's a little bit more blue compared to the yellow and so we're just gonna have to figure out how to make this look good look at that snow coming down it's a pretty epic shoot so uh, let's see how we can make this footage look good now uh, first thing we need to do is switch from the editing workspace to the color workspace and you just click here if you don't see this what you can do is you can go up to your window and find your workspaces and then you can go to color and if it looks different you hit reset to save layout and it'll boom go to this uh, now the first thing you need to do is you need to pull up this tab right here called Lumetri scopes 
and that's going to show you the scopes. If you're not familiar with the, what this is, is this is a tool to help you understand what's happening in your frame. Um, so as we move this, you can see the scopes move. The way that it works is this is your darks, your blacks, this is your brights, your highlights, your whites at the very top. And uh, everything from the left is the left side of your frame, the right is the right side of your frame. So you see this dark spot right here, that is right here. As I move the playhead, you can see it moves. And so this is telling you a couple different things. One, there's a lot of color and dark down here at the bottom, and uh, there's not a lot up here. We've got a couple things clipping. If it's at 100, that means that it's pure white. If it's under zero, that means it's pure black. And so you wanna try and avoid having um, having any, any at all, um, either above or below. So now that we understand what that is, let's go through some color correction techniques. Now there's two ways that I will color correct, um, but they're all the same way. And I'll usually do this clip by clip. So the first way is I'll just start working with my basic corrections. And uh, I'll add in some contrast. This is the way I almost always do it. And then I'll add in some shadows. And right now you'll see it already looks a lot better. Um, so you'll see we're actually adding in saturation without touching the saturation. Uh, most of the time I never add s saturation. I sometimes will desaturate it, but I will never add straight up saturation just because I don't like the way that it looks. Um, now going back to our scopes, you'll see here we've got a few things that are starting to get close to that 100, but if we look at our frame, that is probably that dot right there. And so I'm not terribly worried about that. What I, what I do want to address is that I don't have any blacks uh, close to that zero. And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of bring it down and that will give me a little bit more range. Another thing I can do is since I have so much room at the top is I'll, ex I'll bring up the exposure and then I can bring down my blacks. It kind of spreads everything out and makes it look fairly natural. Now you may notice if your footage was shot a little warm or cool, maybe your white balance is off, you can adjust that too. You can add in a little blue, you can add in a little yellow, um, and just kind of play around with it until you get it to the way that it looks. But that's the way that I will color correct footage. I think it looks really nice that way. Now there's another way, and this is a pro tip. If you hit this button right here, it starts all over. It just resets the whole thing. And so, now we're back to zero. Uh, you can use your curves, and the way that it's done is you kind of put one here. This is, uh, if you're not familiar with curves, this is just an exposure line. So this is your highlights, this is kind of the middle, your midtones, and then this is your shadows. And so these are your blacks and these are your whites. So all you have to do is just add in some shadows and then add in some highlights, and we've just added contrast. And then if you just drag this over, you can bring your blacks down. And that's kind of what we had right before uh, using the basic correction. This is gonna be a little bit more smooth uh, just because it's uh, not quite so um, like numeric. This is a little bit more linear. And so you're gonna have a really nice looking look here. And so you can still use, so say you want to keep this, um, but you need to bring down your highlights. And so then you can go back up to your basic correction bring down your highlights a little bit. And that looks really nice. And really the advantage of color correcting opposed to shooting in a picture profile is you get to choose what this looks like. Uh, you can make it however you want. Uh, and uh, this is uh, just really a way to dial in your footage and take it to that next level. I think it looks great. I think it looks really good. So that's color correcting. And what I'll do is I'll just go through with each, each file and uh, or each clip and I'll just kinda just do that process, just kind of contrast shadows and then bring down my blacks, figure out what looks right and what doesn't, what I need to adjust. And so uh, there we go. That's all I'll do. You'll notice here that the whites are kind of peeking. So maybe I'll bring those down a little bit um, and see I'm getting some of the tree, the colors of the trees and this is snow in here. So it's kind of hard to, to get all that, but uh, that's basically the way that you can color correct. And now your footage doesn't look quite so nasty. Now this all goes back to shooting it, how to properly expose. And so if you need help with that, I would suggest watching that video. 
So now that we've talked about color correction, let's talk about color grading. And color grading is basically adding emotion through color into your footage. So let's reset this, let's reset this, and I'll show you this is the way that I'll do it. So say you want all of this footage to match and look really nice. So the best way for me to do that is I will actually start with a creative LUT on top of all of them. You can add an adjustment layer if you're not familiar with how to make an adjustment layer. You just click on this little new item here and it's in the adjustment layer. So I've already done this but all you have to do is click it and keep it with your settings and then you just stretch it out over the top of all of your clips. Now once you've got your adjustment layer what I'll do is I will go to the creative tab and just kind of flip through here and add a LUT. Um, so let's go with this one. This one looks pretty decent. You can also uh, just add in one of, uh, you know, you can lower the intensity. So 100% is the full LUT. And a LUT is basically, stands for lookup table, but for our purposes, it's just essentially a filter. It's a little bit more advanced than that, but that's what we'll go with. So you can add 100% of the LUT, or you can add uh, zero. And so, or you can find a happy medium. So say we wanna add in, let's say 50% or so, somewhere in here and then uh, what we can do is we can actually even uh, add some more correction on top of this adjustment layer so on top of the LUT to give a little bit more definition so now what we can see here is it's got a little bit of a stylized look to the shot. Now it still looks pretty good what I would do is maybe crank down but what I'm not gonna do is dial in a whole bunch of my settings on this adjustment layer. What I'll do is I'll kind of create a basic look that looks pretty good for most of them. Um, and then I'll go in and fine tune each and every one of these clips so that it matches. So see here, this one, uh, we'll kind of start with this one because it already looks pretty good. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll bring this up just a little bit and then bring down my shadows a little bit more, bring down my blacks. Got an email from Harbor Freight. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Now this is our look. Now the way that we can always see this one is if you actually click on this right here, it will bring up a comparison view, which duplicates our, our window here. This is your reference window. This is the one that we're going to be constantly coming back to. And this is the one where our, our playhead is at. So if I move the window or my playhead, you're going to see it uh, the one on the left stays the same, that's our reference window, but this one moves. And so now we can kind of match it when we're looking at it right next to each other. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of try and match up some of this footage. So this is a good shot to kind of match up here. Now you'll notice that this is a little blue, so the first thing I'll do is add in a little bit of yellow, maybe take out some of the pinks, and we're starting to get that same kind of look. The more that you do this, the better you're gonna get at it. So maybe add in some shadows. Another option that you can do is uh, instead of adjusting it manually, when you're in this reference mode, this comparison view, if you click on your clip and then you go down to your color wheels and matching, you can try and do an automatic match. And so if you hit this, you see what happens. Hey, that doesn't look terrible might be a little bit uh, deeper blacks. So what I'll do is I'll bring my blacks up. But other than that, I mean, that looks pretty decent. It looks pretty good. Uh, and we could probably roll with that. It still looks a little blue. So maybe I'd, I'd bring that up and bring down my purple. Uh, but yeah, so that's another way that you can do it. And you can kind of play with that to see how it works. But that's an easy way to match the footage. It doesn't always work that great. We'll try it with this one. It probably won't work as well. Yeah, doesn't look terrible. Actually looks pretty good. So that's an easy way once you get your, your main look. Now it's referencing to match. It's referencing this window. So if you move this to somewhere else, it's going to reference somewhere else. So that one we haven't done yet. It's a little bit flatter. Um, we'll go back to to this guy holding the camera. And we'll move on to that one and see what happens. Let's do this one here. We'll hit apply match, see what it looks like. Doesn't look terrible. So that's an easy way to do it. 
but you know what's happening so you can adjust it if that doesn't work let's try another one maybe this one let's see this one probably won't work as well let's try it here eh that doesn't look terrible it's probably a little contrasty compared to the other one and it's really dark so what you can do is you can bring it up you can bring it down a little bit here i would actually probably lower the contrast and then another thing, this is a little quick tip. You'll see this uh, red piece of tape that I put on all my cameras. Uh, let's try and get rid of that. So what we can do is we can go down to the curves, click on this little color picker, and actually just select that color. Now on this, on this um, color line, it, it selects the left side, it selects the right side, and this is kind of the color. And so I'll just kind of bring it down and get rid of that color. So now when we play it, that color doesn't stick out nearly as much as it did when it was bright. And then it goes to the next one. So we're already looking pretty good here. This is uh, just this kind of the process that I go through to, to color grade my footage. It may not be the best, but that's the way that I've come up with, and uh, I'll just kind of keep playing with the footage until it is how I like it. Yep. Maybe I'd bring that up a little bit. It was looking a little dark. You can see that snow falling in the background there. Looks so cool. Let's see what uh, this one. So once again, you just kind of play around uh, with with how it looks. You can try this matching. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it just doesn't. But uh, right now it's looking pretty good. Kind of like the way that these are all coming together. So maybe bring up the shadows a little bit and see this is the beauty of color grading is you're controlling uh, what the footage looks like and we're going with pretty you know high contrast there's lots of whites there's lots of darks it's kind of moody um, I'm not adding in saturation just kind of playing around with with my coloring and then we'll go to this one this is going to be the worst one let's let's see what happens when we hit the color matching on this one See, he's in the shadows and he's got a lot more saturation. So let's do this one manually real quick. This is the last one, and then we will kind of land the plane here. So uh, we'll add in some contrast. We'll add in some shadows. And right away we're seeing he's sitting in the shadows. So how can we combat this? Well, we can raise the overall exposure. And what that's doing is it's starting to, to clip the back. So uh, let's take some of these whites and bring them down. Maybe bring some of these highlights and bring up some of these shadows. And so it's starting to look a little bit flatter because everything is moving towards the center. So now let's bring down our blacks and uh, we're getting there. I'm starting to see it. And I'm just kind of matching, matching what's happening. Uh, let's take off the comparison. We can kind of see what he looks like here. So now you'll notice, now that we've got the bigger screen, um, it's got some weird things going on with his face here. It looks like there's some, some yellows. And that, that might just be because we're pushing the footage past its limits. And so what I would do is I'd go back to our curves here, and I would click on uh, just kind of this yellow skin tone that looks a little weird. And I just pull some of that down, get rid of some of that extra yellow. I think it looks a little bit more natural, like that. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to look black and white. But he's looking good. Maybe add in a little bit more contrast. We just keep going with it. All we're trying to do is just protect him uh, to make him look good and match the other footage. So you'll see here we're just barely, barely pushing our blacks into there and our whites are up here so everything is still protected and uh, then we'll just kind of see how does this match the rest of the footage and we'll just keep going I think it looks pretty good so that's basically how I color grade is I just kind of go each clip by clip if uh, I'm trying to match them and it's looking pretty good well, hopefully this tutorial has been very helpful for you. Honestly though, the best way to get better at coloring footage is to just do it. You gotta get into the computer, play with the tools, see how they work, play with your footage, 
push it to its limits, see how far you can do it. And honestly, that's gonna help you shoot better as well because you're gonna see, oh, this file was over uh, exposed or this one was underexposed and that will help you on the shooting side as well. Honestly though, you just have to play with it. You just have to keep working it and see what works for you. If this video was helpful, I would love for you to like it. If you've got any comments though, leave them. Let me know what you're thinking. If you've got any questions, let's work through it together. You can either leave it in the comment section or feel free to leave me a message on Instagram and I'll get back to you individually. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. We're having a good time learning and growing together. Speaking of subscriptions, let's talk about the giveaway. Now, I'm just going to give away a Rode Video Micro. They didn't reach out to me and give me one. I'm going to purchase this and just mail it to you. I'm still trying to figure out how it's going to work internationally, but uh, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. So, the way that you enter the... the uh, giveaway is basically all you have to do is just leave a comment on this video and on March 6th I'm gonna go through and just pick someone through those comments and then I will upload a video that says who the winner is and uh, we'll get in contact and I will mail you the microphone simple so leave a comment on this video if you're interested in the microphone let me know how you'd use it maybe tell me about your camera maybe tell you what you've learned from this video i don't care just make a comment so that we can grow together other than that hey thanks for watching the video i hope you have a great week and we'll see you in the next one